So let's look at the story of the power point. Now those are fake power points. They need a power cord. They just are self-sufficient, right? So it's actually mute yourself and and a moment to reflect. Sure. Thank you, Dr. John. Here. My name is Craig Keto. Uh, I started seeing Dr. Chaudhry about uh, about a year ago. Um, I'm very first and foremost thankful that he invited me here. Uh, I did pay for it still, but um, I'm thankful for his invitation. Um, and it, it's it, to sit with him for any amount of time is well worth the, the money spent. Um, I uh, want to go through some things here. He, he asked me to describe my experience from before I started seeing him, when I saw him first to where I am now. And I think it, it's quite powerful and it's something that I never imagined happening to me, but just seeing other happen to other people. Um, about, uh, well, if I take you back to the beginning here, you said I got about five minutes. So, um, in, um, in my teens, my mother started taking me to doctors saying, you know, there's something wrong with you, etc. cetera. Um, and then it, it went from talking to here's some pills and, um, Never it was ever very much discussion of mentally where I was and how I could improve that. It was just like, here's a pill, see you in six months. It's, it, it, it never made sense to me. Um, uh, I'm an um, undergrad in Pitt in finance, MBA in Pitt finance. Um, done okay professionally, but always very always struggled socially and also always struggled um, uh, with with anxiety, with patience, always having a lot of racing thoughts and you know, difficulty. Um, I would make uh, pretty much simple, almost stupid mistakes, but just for lack of um, being able to be calm. Um, I had a, in six years. I worked up to a high position at PNC, um, but I did, it didn't work out. And many, mostly because I couldn't um, mentally be calm enough to handle the position every day. Uh, it just was so um, everywhere else in my mind but where I needed it to be. I would make simple math errors that, that not an important job that on a trading floor. And it was a big deal. Um, but I couldn't figure out why. No one ever helped me understand why. It was just here's another pill. Um, about 24 months ago, I, I really tried to get this figured out. Um, I had been seeing the same doctor for years. He was like a 15 minute pill mill type thing, a 15 minute appointment. And then you were supposed to go to talk to someone else to talk, but he, he handled the treatment, which didn't make sense either. Um, I saw, started, I tried to find a few different doctors. Um, one of them said, oh, well, you, you, you admit that you've used marijuana. I want you to go to Gateway Rehab. Don't ever call me again until you do. I'm never calling him again. I'm never calling Gateway Rehab. Um, <laughs> neither was the problem. Um, another doctor asked me if I ever cried. I'm not, still not sure where that was going. Um, uh, another one just was pretentious with me. You know, I, I've studied a lot of psychology in, in the last oh, eight years or so. I used to think it was some goofy thing, but I really enjoy it now. And um, I, I would mention things that I had learned. I'd talk about um, the triune brain theory, and she thought that I was. Um, she she's, uh, accused me of just being like a popular, uh, popular psychology type guy who really didn't know the important stuff. So I needless to say, I quit seeing her. Um, then actually about a year ago, I applied for a disability, or I wanted to apply for disability. Um, and then I went to see a lawyer and he said, well, you have this education, you're, you're this, you're that, well, you'll never get qualified, I just can't do it. And um, I left wondering, well, what am I gonna do? I, I was down in the dumps, I really, wasn't working, I wasn't doing much at all every day. I was, I guess to, to push you out where I was at that point in time, um, I'd maybe make, if I made a phone, one phone call that day, that was a real big deal. You know, if I left the house that day, that was a real big deal. Um, and he, he referred me to uh, Dr. Chaudhry. And um, it's been not even a year, I don't think, since my first appointment with him. Um, I'm now uh, extremely active. I run my own business with my business partner. I'm a real estate investor. Um, I'm much more active. I mean, it, it's he can probably explain better than me what I looked like when I came in, because um, I almost forget how I looked and how I felt. But I was just very dull and sad and um, tired, very tired and, and, and lack of energy and zest for life. Um, and it, it, 
he didn't do anything that anybody else couldn't do for me. He just helped me realize what I needed to realize. Um, he, he, he always pushes the word awareness, awareness. And we, that's something I keep in my mind all the time. I'm constantly aware of things now. Uh, I can connect the dots better in my head for why I act a certain way, how to change that action. Um, he, he's very good at that. We have wonderful discussions and uh, he, he's very good at you know, breaking things down in a way that I can understand. And no one else has ever been able to do that for me. Um, from, from the moment I met him, there was a sense of calmness, which I, I would also say is a, a very deep sense of love. He, he will sit there and listen to anything. He's the, extremely patient. I, I can't imagine a more patient man um, for the, the things that you know, I just spit out of my mouth and other people I'm sure do too. Um, he's helped me get over all kinds of guilt, um, just all kinds of guilt. And also the fear. I, so much fear was really the main thing holding me back. I, I thought, well, I need to stop procrastinating. I, so I write down stop procrastinating and look at it every day. Well, that didn't do anything. Why was I procrastinating? Because I'm scared. Um, I had to overcome that fear. Um, and I, I'd say in the 30 to 45 minute uh, meeting with him, I laugh more than I do the rest of the month. We just, he understands me, he gets my sense of humor. He, um, and also, he's not above the law. Um, and I, I guess this is supposed to be about me, but it's, he's helped me get there. I want to give him some praise. He um, never looks at me in a condescending fashion. He's, he's never um, it looks at me like, it, you know, I did something bad, or you're, you're, I'm going to punish you. Or um, he doesn't look at me like he's smarter than me. Um, I, a recent example of something to, to show you how he has helped me. Um, about a week ago, you know, my mother handed her cell phone to my father, and I'm sitting there, and, and he, he says, well, I don't know how to use this, I can't use this. And he's like, it's all, this is where I realize I get it from, it's from my parents, all this panickiness and, and whatnot, regardless of how um, the uh, inheritance part comes into play with the, the, the inheritance of their genes, it still, the actions have a lot to do with it as well, I believe. Um, so my dad's saying, um, you know, I don't know how to use it. I don't. I never know how to use. It. I don't know how to use a computer. He's like freaking out. And I'm, I'm looking at this, and normally I would freak out too. That's where I learned it from, and that's natural to me. And I stopped. I slowed down, and, and I said, Dad, she's going to teach you now how to call your son, my my brother. And she showed him very slowly and carefully how to actually push the contact button and find his number, and everything was fine. But that, that, that I have never been able to break that down mentally. I just get caught up in it. Um, and, and Dr. Chandra has allowed me to, through his, you know, whatever he said to me, allow me to, to learn that, to learn how to spot that, to identify that. Um, and I, I keep constantly come back to the concept of awareness, um, which he preaches a lot, in, in a good way. He says, once you're more aware of, of things, you can then take action. Um, and, and I, um, I've studied psychology, like I said, I, I knew about um, observing ego, but I didn't know how to put it into practice. Well, okay, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing, how do I do that? And somehow he's been able to, to do that for me. Um, and I would say, I'm definitely not special, like I said, I'm not doing anything special. I never thought I'd be standing here uh, speaking to all of you. It, it, the thought uh, years ago would have you know, scared me to death, I'd have been up here reading on note cards. Um, but yeah, if I can do it, anyone can do it, and um, I urge many, I urge you to try and learn all you can from him because I believe he is a very brilliant man, and um, he, he's just helped me so so much. So, um, I, I thank you all very much for being here, and um, I thank him for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. Um, thank you all. What we will do is that uh, I'm going to ask you books from Krishna. So we'll do maybe three minutes each year so that we can let the process flow. Even though I may have promised something different or not, so this is like <laughs> letting go of beautiful, letting be, you know, like it's beautiful. So really one of the basic premises, we just flow with life, or we become stressful with life. And at this moment, the message is not a lot more has to be said. 
a lot more has to be. And that is so very beautiful. So I know you may have a lot to say, but Krishna has a, his ways of ejecting us from the seat. All right, hello. Um, I am actually, while well, I was sitting there the whole time, I was doing mindfulness because I'm totally freaked out to be speaking in front of all of you guys. Um, so I was like grounding myself with this ring and um, just using a lot of the techniques that Dr. Chaudhary's taught me. Um, I have been sick since I was eight months old. Um, I had very severe asthma. And then I just started breaking bones and dislocating things. And then um, I became depressed. And I was depressed for like 10 years. Um, and then it wasn't until a year ago that I finally abandoned that. Um, and it was really uh, a God thing. Um, as many people have said today about the spiritual realm, I am very strong in that. And I really believe that. God and Jesus were the one that saved my life. I mean, a year ago, I would have been like, oh, nope, I wouldn't have been standing here. I would have been in heaven. Um, but I am, and I'm very thankful. And um, I just felt I wanted to say like a couple of quotes and stuff, and that is um, there's a Christian song called Amazing Grace. And one of the lines from it is, I once was blind, but now I see. And about a year ago, I really felt like that's what happened. Um, I was just so blinded by my um, depression. I couldn't feel, I couldn't um, experience anything. And um, then God just put on those rose-colored glasses or whatever you want to call it, and I could see. Um, I could see the beauty, the mountains, the sunsets, I mean, sunrises, um, and I'm just a changed person. Um, you probably wouldn't recognize me a year ago uh, from who I am today. Um, and then a couple of other quotes are, uh, my mom gave me this really great book with a bunch of really meaningful quotes in it, and uh, some from the Bible and some from just brilliant people. Um, and one of them says, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's just incredibly meaningful, um, I'm sure, to a lot of you and definitely to me because I felt like I've had a thunderstorm in my life for most of my life and then it turns into mass destruction <laughs> at certain times. Um, and, you know, just the mindfulness is so important. Dr. Chaudhry, uh, is a great man. He promised my mom that he would sell hot dogs if he didn't heal me. Um, <laughs> and she remembered that and she was like, you know what? I swear if he doesn't heal you, I'm gonna make him sell hot dogs. Um, but he has, and this, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably over three minutes, but really quick, I just, it, you know, I sit down in the morning and like this gentleman here said, I, we laugh the entire session, we just laugh. Um, and, you know, it's not about the medication at all. And that's been my whole life, is about medication, how medica medication can solve you and heal you and stuff like that. For, you know, our 45 to an hour discussion, we talk about anything. And for two minutes, maybe less, we talk about medication. Um, maybe sometimes, it, most of the time, it's 30 seconds. Um, and so, He's a great man, and I'm very thankful to him. I'm very thankful to God. I'm very thankful to all the wonderful people that God has put in my life. Um, and I'm thankful to all of you for listening to me and dealing with my nervousness. Uh, I'm done now. I should have known you were going to do this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lelia. Um, I always say there's three sides to me. There's manic, there's depressed, and there's stable. I have been going to Dr. Chaudhry for years now, 
and I'll get to a point where I think I'm completely happy, and then the bottom drops out. And I have to go back again. And I just learned I have to do even more work on myself, which actually I'm kind of excited about, because something needs to help. Um, I went misdiagnosed probably, actually, for 17 and a half years of my life. I have been from one psychiatrist to another, from one therapist to another. I finally have the right team. And even though I don't feel so great right now, I know I'm going to get back to where I was, which is being stable. It's... <laughs> I've been saying for a while now, it's not much fun being me right now, but I know it's going to pass. And I used one of the tricks at work. I've been using one mindfully at work, and it actually works. Because your head, it, it's like, I say it's like being grounded, but what it really is like is like a mental prison. You are, you are completely held captive by your own mind. And it sucks, I'm not gonna lie. I've, I stood up here the last time and did a poem about mania, I don't even know how many years ago, but it's just, I can't believe that we finally, I finally found the right people to help me this time. So I wish I could say I'm happy right now, but that I'm not very good at pretending. But I know I'll get there, and I have him and Kim to thank for that. Thanks. Uh, thank you, all of you, for sharing. I uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, with us, uh, your stories. Uh, it's very important. We need to hear the truth. We have a saying that uh, what I heard all this uh, morning, everyone actually uh, is saying one thing actually uh, from the dis uh, different angle and this different uh, perspective. And all we are focusing is on one thing, that is our well-being. And that's very important. And now talking about the mindfulness, what do we have to be mindful of? And one thing, that is your well-being. And we have to be mindful of our well-being. And how do we begin? How can we be mindful of our well-being? And well, then the different techniques and different possibilities are present. And first thing, everybody starts that, you know, behavior. That's the first thing. You have to be mindful of your behavior. Now, how many, I have a question now. How many of you feel and think that your life is precious? And how many of you think and feel that your well-being is also precious? And how many of you who feel and think that your life is precious and your well-being your well-being is precious and how many of you are actually mindful of it raise your hand and not only mindfulness but also acting on it now that's very important if you do you you actually are taking care of your life and understanding and realizing the preciousness of your life Now, how can we develop the mindfulness? Let's say you think that your life is precious. Let's say you feel that your well-being is precious, and I am going to do it. 
Now what can you do? What do you do? I'm like, yeah, what do you do? The doctor said, so many speakers said that first thing is you have to change your behavior. That's the best way. Before we're going into the pill or prescription, first approach is changing our behavior. Now when we think about the behavior, we have to know the state of our being. That's what I just gave this morning exercise. Knowing the state of your mind, knowing the state of your feeling, and knowing the state of your physical body. So that we can change the behavior. Mental behavior, physical behavior, emotional behavior, and verbal behavior. What actually lead us to exhaustion and deterioration of our body, mind, and spirit. Now, simple example is behavior is how can we control? How many of you actually get enough sleep? The doctor just said. How many of you get enough sleep? How many of you get, you get uh, enough time to rest? How many of you take a time to eat? Now, that's a very important. That is why we have to change the behavior. If you're not sleeping, that is why we have to change. If you're not get, eating well, you have to change. Then it says, uh, you know, like a misbehavior. Then after that, controlling the behavior, then actually move to second phase is that we have to train in the mindfulness of what we are eating. Diet is very, very important. Toward the transformation, toward the healing, it is very important to control the behavior and also the controlling the diet. Now talking about the diet, I just want to share a story about my life. Almost now, I think like two years ago, May 2012, I got sick and ill. And doctor told me that uh, I have a diabetes. My A1C is 11.9. Uh, 11, 11 and I have a high cholesterol. And, but also the, my liver is in particular in a very bad condition. So I got a very good doctor and then told me, well, Tempa, I don't think you can, see, I don't know your liver is going to survive more than five years. And we have to do a biopsy. And then I was a little bit concerned about biopsy, and then I said, I'm going to wait a little bit. <clears throat> and I like what she was saying is, you know, uh, Lydia saying, like, I found the right, right people, right place. That's very, very important. I still I keep my nutrition, uh, diabetes educational in my prayer every day. I think about her. And then when I was diagnosed with the diabetes and what she told me as well, Tempa, uh -huh. um, it is in your hand actually. You can do something about it. Thus I become mindful of what she said. Now, the definition of mindfulness is to be one with what you choose to do. And definition of mindfulness is not forgetting, not forgetting. But the doctor told me that, well, you have to change in the, do some exercise and change in the food that you eat. See, that's two things. And I focus on that. And it helped. In December 2013, December 18, 2013, I went back to the doctor again, and then my A1C3, A1C, I think three, right? So it came down to 5.4. And they said that normal is uh, 5.6. So that change has happened in my life. And also, my doctor, liver doctor, who think that I need to do a biopsy, and it won't last for five years, and now, he says that my doctor, my liver is normal. And all I could share is that, that first thing is we have to make a changes within. Yeah. We all have a healing potential. Okay? Now I tell you one thing, then I'm going to stop. Now how we begin? to bring a changes in our life. Changes in the behavior, changes in the diet, and changes in the state of our body, mind, and feeling. I ask you for one thing. Okay, one thing. Buddha said, if you want to take care of the world, then take care of your mind. 
Now, if you ask me, how do I take care of her mind? I request, I, I request you all one simple one thing. When you get up, the first day, first thought, I want you to produce a good thought, positive thought. That's just all you do. When you get up, your first thought has to be positive. That's all. So that, that positive thought, what you have to be mindful of. Over and over again, you have to return back to that positive thought. There might be 10,000 distractions, difficulties, obstacles you might face within the continuum of becoming one with that positive thought. But however, you have to do your best as a practice to be one with the thought. So that the thought become your strength for the rest of your day. And if you could do it, when you go back to your bed, when you return to your bed, and then again, what you do is you produce a good thought, a positive thought, a thought that can give you a very strong sleep so that you can get up. So those things we have to do, okay? Now mindfulness comes from hearing. How can we stabilize? The mindfulness is not going to work other, unless it becomes stable and spontaneous. How can mindfulness become st stable? Awareness become stable? You have to hear. So that's why I gave you an example that I keep hearing the voice of my uh, diabetes educationalist. Hey, Tempa, you have to eat exact amount of food. Not too much fat, not too much sugar. The moment I'm going to put a little bit more rice, I remember what she said. So it becomes a wisdom. So mindfulness strength through the head. And secondly, contemplation from your side, okay? I have to contemplate. Oh, I have to return to back thought. I have to return, I have to be positive. I have to always positive. I, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. So that is, you have to keep thinking about that. So contemplation help to strengthen the mindfulness. And finally, with, finally, with the help of contemplation and hearing, then it becomes meditation. Now, meditation means uh, wisdom of familiarity. Does that make sense? What's become right? What's become wrong? So, um, please be mindful of uh, your thought. Positive thought, give happiness, and negative thought, you know. And I want to thank you to Dr. Chaudhary and say clear everybody for giving me an opportunity to say some more. Thank you. Thank you for the very wonderful stories uh, of, of living wisdom. And I really appreciate that. I really don't bring in the change, people bring in the change. I, I bring in the environment, bring in the change. And that's really all that there is to be.